Hello and welcome to Hexed Encountered. My name's Joe. Today I am going to be doing a playthrough of the Solitaire version of Archie's War, The Battle for Guadalcanal. This is a game designed by Derek Croxton and published by Worthington Publishing. And it is a game that has a two-player mode and a solitaire mode. It's a double-sided map board. It is mounted and one side is the solitaire board and the other side is the two-player board. This will be a playthrough of the solitaire side. Uh, if I get a chance, I will do a video on the two-player, um, but I don't know when or if that will happen, so I'm not going to make any promises, but I would like to do so, and if I get the opportunity, I absolutely will. But in the meantime, we are going to do a playthrough of the solitaire version, and this basically is centered around the fighting for Henderson Field. So if you are familiar with the battle for Guadalcanal, obviously the fight for Henderson Field was very important and integral to that, to that battle. Uh, the Marines were often on their own most of the time. There were times when the Navy, because of the naval fighting going on in the so-called Iron Bottom Sound right off the coast there of Guadalcanal, uh, the Japanese won some victories there and uh, there were a lot of ships sunk during this particular campaign. And so, you know, supremacy of the sea lanes kind of went back and forth a little bit. But there were times when the Marines were essentially on their own. They had their, uh, their Marine Air Group 23, the, uh, the Cactus Air Force, so-called Cactus Air Force, that uh, basically operated off of Henderson Field, despite the field often being shelled by the Japanese, both by uh, naval, naval guns and by uh, land-based artillery. So, uh, yeah, it, I mean, that's obviously a famous, a famous thing, a famous uh, part of the fighting for Guadalcanal, in addition to the, just the Marines' defense of the airfield in the face of sometimes fanatical Japanese attacks. So this game kind of models that a little bit. And, um, you know, it's a good, quick-playing, relatively light, uh, in terms of rules, look at the fighting for uh, Henderson Field. So without further ado, I'm going to get down to playing. And what I probably will do is instead of going over all the mechanics, etc. right away, I'll talk about them as they come up and we'll play through the game. And you'll see it's a lot of um, rolling for events and you, the Japanese are controlled by a chart. They have six possible actions and then some of those actions will lead to a second or third roll in some cases to determine what actually happens. As the Americans, you get to pick one action per turn. There are 18 turns. Every third turn until uh, every th third turn from turn three through turn 15, the Americans get one reinforcement. There are also ways you can request help from the Navy, which might result in additional reinforcement. But um, that's all dependent upon dice rolls and the American player strategy. So we will get into that in, uh, in detail here in a moment. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to stop yapping about the game in general and let's get down to seeing how it plays. OK, so the first thing that we have to do is the American chooses their action. We have six actions here, one of which is appealing to the Navy for help. And then we would roll on the American events chart down here. Now, one key concept is you have three main areas where the Japanese will be attacking. You have point crews over here. Coley Point over here and Bloody Ridge here in the center. Here's Henderson Field right in the middle. Here is General Vandergrift. He is, uh, you know, basically adjacent to the field. But this basically indicates what kind of impact he has as a DRM, essentially, or strength modifier is what it really is for the American defenders as they defend against the Japanese attacks. Basically, what's going to happen is if the Japanese achieve an overrun in any one of these three areas, they win the game. This is the strength track here or Henderson Field status track. And if this ever ends up in this box and then they roll for another damage point and it would go off the track, you lose. So you start here, you have two zero spots. So you can afford to take a hit and go down here, but then you need to make sure you start using your repair action to try and get this up. And the only time you can use the same action twice is when Henderson Field status is in the zero box. You can try to repair it twice in a row. Otherwise, you cannot use the same action back to back. You have to mix it up, which is good. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to repair Henderson Field. 
So I'm going to put my cube in this box to indicate that. So the American player makes their choice. Then the Japanese have to make a choice, and you do that by rolling a die. So we have one die. We'll roll it, and we get a one. So a one here is, let's slide this over so you can see, point cruise. So roll a die to see if the Japanese attack. If the die roll is less than or equal to the Japanese strength value at point cruise, they attack the Marines there. If they do not attack, add two strength value to the Japanese in this location and roll for an artillery bombardment of Henderson Field. Okay, so we're going to roll again. And if they have two here, so if they roll a two or a one, they get to attack. If they roll anything else, they're going to add two additional strength values here to go to a four. And then they would also roll for an artillery attack on Henderson Field, which could result in uh, damage. So let's, uh, let's roll here. And they get a one, so they do get to attack. So the way the Japanese attack strength, okay, so you roll. So Japanese attack strength at Point Cruise and Coley Point. So those are the two on either end, not Bloody Ridge. Bloody Ridge is separate. You would take their front strength, which is two, plus Bonsai Table results. So we have to roll for that, plus half of the reserve strength, which would be one. And then infiltration strength, which is currently zero. So we're going to roll a die for the bonsai first. And it gets another one. I keep rolling ones. I don't know why. But that gives them an additional zero. So it's two plus zero plus half of two is one. So they have three. Okay. Now for the American defense strength is over here. You get front strength, which is two, plus air support, which is zero plus half of their reserve strength, which is two as well, so that's three to three, plus Vandegrift strength, so it's two, so it's three to five. So when, it, when the Americans' SV is equal to or higher than the Japanese, the Japanese lose a strength value. If the Japanese is higher than the Americans, the Americans lose a strength value. So in this case, they're going to lose one, if they were higher, the Americans would lose one. If they're more than twice as high, then it's an overrun and the Americans lose. So that's how the combat works from the Japanese standpoint. The American standpoint's a little bit different. So I'm going to pull this out, and they're going to put a one in here instead. And that's it. And so now we would, uh, now we would roll for our Henderson Field repair. So once you do, let me slide this back. Once you do your Japanese action, here we have repair Henderson Field. Roll one die, and on a one to three, move the marker on Henderson Field status one to the right. Okay, so let's uh, let's see if we can get something. Well, a one would be ideal for me, and I got a two. So that worked, um, but I didn't roll a one, which is a nice change of pace because I had rolled one three times in a row. And that's it. That's the end of turn one. We go to turn two, and we repeat the process. Now, I can not choose to repair Henderson Field because it's on a one. So I just did that. So I have to try something else. So let's do, let's raid point crews to see if we can knock them all the way down to zero. Oh, one thing at the end of the turn, the Americans are allowed to move, to move their strength, to move their players. Or, um, they can move, uh, they can re rearrange their defense. So I want to do that. I want to move both of my reserves up to uh, Bloody Ridge. So what this is going to do now is if we have another attack, because I moved my two reserves out, our strength isn't going to be, we might end up, this is dicey. This is what, this is the key core part of the game. And this would still be part of turn one. Key part of the game, the key thing to keep in mind is this is basically a resource balancing act, right? You have limited Marines to spread around and you have to spread them around because if you don't, you can leave this open, but if they roll an attack here, they're going to win the game automatically. So you need, maybe I'll just put one here. We'll put one there and I'll keep one in reserve. Although once you divide them in half, you round down anyway, so I might as well put two here. Because 0.5 rounded down is zero. So it might as well be zero. Okay. So now we go to turn two. 
In turn three, I get a reinforcement so I can put it in reserves and then I'd have somebody there. But right now, I want to make sure I cover the three areas because if they attack any area and we don't have somebody there, it's game over. So we're in turn two now. I'm going to choose to raid point crews. Okay, so using the damage table, which is here, Roll one die and reduce the strength value of point at point crews by the hit value. So we're going to do that. They only have one, one strength point there. And we rolled a five, which would be two. So now they have no strength at point crews. Actually, I did that wrong. <laughs> that's our action. We roll for their action. I rolled a five. That's an air raid. We'll keep the roll. So I rolled a five. That's an air raid. We roll one die and add the current air support value, because that's one, to the die roll. On a modified die roll of one to four, they damage the airfield and move the marker on Henderson field status one to the left. So we're going to roll the die again, and we're going to add one to the die roll. And if it's one to four, this is going to slide back to the left. It's a five, so we add one, which makes it a six, so they, that was in, unsuccessful. Now we will roll for our point, point cruise raid. We rolled a two. A two is still a one, so even though I already removed it, it's st that still is going to be the event. So we will... I'm actually going to move one of my Marines from there. Uh, yeah, I'm going to move them both. Into reserve, since the Japanese currently have no strength there, they can't attack there. You know what? I'm not. I'm not going to do that. All right, we go to turn three. The Americans get a uh, reserve. And we get to pick our action. And we can't do raid point crews, not that there would be any point. So now we'll do repair Henderson Field again. And we'll roll for the Japanese action. And we get a four. And a four is infiltrate. If the American player has not chosen the patrol action, add one strength value to the Japanese infiltration value. So they get one point in here. And that's that. Now we'll roll for our Henderson field repair. And if we roll a one to three, we get to... Whoops. Well, it was a five. I'll keep it, even though I didn't go through the tower. So no success there. We go to turn four. And you can see the game actually moves really quickly. So this time, let's try to appeal to the Navy for help so that we can actually get... Uh, and I know you can't see these actions, but uh, I don't know that that's important at the moment. I'll show you the American event chart, which is what this is going to result in at the end of this particular roll. So now let's roll for the Japanese action. And that's a four. So again, they get infiltrate. And again, I did not choose patrol as my action. So I'm going to put a two here now. And now we'll roll for our American event. So I slide this back over so you can see it. So here are the American events. We get a three. A three is reinforcements. Add one marine strength value to any location or to the reserves. So we will now have two in our reserves. Okay, and now we go to turn number five. And so I need to pick something else. We'll go back to repair Henderson Field. Okay, so we roll again. For the Japanese, they get a one. So again, we're looking at point crews. Okay. So they don't have any units there, but if they don't uh, successfully attack by rolling, um, so you roll a die to see if they attack. So uh, actually, if it's less than or equal, th their attack value is zero, so they don't have it, so they don't attack. So they are going to get a two to put here, and we will roll for an artillery bombardment. Okay, so we roll the artillery here um yeah roll for an artillery bombardment so if it's a one or two it's a hit, it's a hit and we'll put a cube in here and then they'll always they'll always hit on a one or a two oh my 
goodness. It's a five. They rolled a five. As you can see, they rolled a five. So that is not a successful bombardment, but they did add two strength back into that. So now we roll for our repair attempt on Henderson Field. So again, one to three. One to three, we get a successful repair. And we got a five, so no repair. So we go to turn six. At the end of this turn, we'll get a reserve. I gave it to us at the beginning before. That is wrong. So I'm going to appeal to the Navy for help this turn. So we'll roll for the Japanese. We got a five. That is an air raid. Roll one die and add the current air support. We already did this once, so let's do it again. So we roll. We got a four this time. With the plus one, it's a five. There is no successful th there. I'm going to take this. Uh, I'll take them both off, and we're going to put a three here. So we have three in reserve now. Now I can, if I wish, kind of re reassign. Maybe I should do that. Let's put the three here and leave two here. Or maybe we'll leave. No, let's leave two there. Let's leave two there. And I'm going to try to, you know, bulk them all up, obviously. So now we go to turn. Uh, actually, I have to roll for my uh, Navy appeal. So let's let's take a look at these events here. One, High Command rejects. HQ has other priorities. You receive no assistance at this time. So not good. All right, move to seven. This time we will go again to try to repair Henderson Field. We roll a three for the Japanese. That is Bloody Ridge. So we're going to roll a die. If it's a one or a two, they attack. It is a four, so they do not attack, but they add two strength there. So this becomes a four. And we roll for the bombardment. And again, they need a one or a two. And they got a six. Got a six. So no uh, no success there. Let's go to turn eight. This time we will... Uh, actually, I need to roll for my repair of Henderson Field. I keep forgetting to do this. I've done that, I think, at least once. So it's a four, and that is not... A successful repair. Now we go to turn eight. This time I'm going to do a raid on the jungle to try and reduce these guys. But let's roll for the Japanese. They get a one. So again, point crews. They have a two. So one or two is an attack. It's a three. It's a three. So not an attack. This becomes a four. And they roll for the bombardment, and it's a three, so no success there either. Now we'll roll for our jungle raid, use the damage table, roll one die. We rolled a six, which is two, so this now becomes a two. Okay. All right, so that was actually worthwhile. We go to turn nine. For this turn, I'm going to, I'm going to do a patrol this time, see if we can reduce this. So now we'll roll for the Japanese action. They get a five. A five is an air raid again. So again, they're going to need to roll a... Uh, they need to roll a one to three. And they rolled a four because our strength is still one. So they fail. We'll do our patrol now. So this cancels the infiltrate, which they didn't roll. If not, if they have one or more infiltrate strength value, roll a die on one to three, reduce one strength value of the infiltration value. And it's a two, so this now becomes a one. Okay, and it's turn, end of turn nine, so we get a reinforcement, um, which means I'm going to put a three here. And we'll put these two ones out. So now Coley Point and Point Cruise are at three. 
Still only two here. So now we go to uh, turn 10. <clears throat> let's do repair again. Actually, let's try for an event. So we're going to try for an event. Let's roll for Japan's action. They get a one. So again, we're at point cruise. So this time, a one to four results in an attack. And it's a six. So they're really bumping up their their attack here. So they, I'm gonna I don't have a six. So we'll put a five and a one here. Um, and now we roll for our naval or for our art artillery, which is still no. We rolled a three. So now we'll roll for the American event. Let me pull this down so that this is everything is in the shot here. We get a five. Aviation, fuel, and aircraft. Improve Henderson Field by moving the marker on the Henderson Field status one to the right. The Navy flies in planes from carriers or lands extra aviation fuel. So we're still at one, but we've moved up the track, which is good. So this, uh, this goes to 11. Next, we're going to do... Let's try a raid on Point Cruise to see if we can knock some of that strength out of there. So now let's roll for Japan. They get a six this time, which is Japanese events. So this can be interesting. First time we've seen this. They get a three, attrition. Eliminate one American strength value at a location of your choice. Well, I think from the Japanese standpoint, they would probably choose to eliminate this one. So let's do that. And we'll put two ones in here again. Because they have six and we only have two now. So now we'll do our raid on point cruise. We're going to roll on this damage table right here. And I think we rolled a one. Oh no, we rolled a two. So that's one damage point. One is better than none, so I'll take it. Okay, so we go to turn 12. This time I am going to... Uh, what are we going to do here? Let's go for... I'm going to go for the, nah, I'm going to go to, yeah, I'm going to go to appeal for help again. So let's roll for the Japanese. They get a three. A three is Bloody Ridge. So they're attacking at Bloody Ridge. So their strength there is two. And they got a two. They rolled a two. So they are attacking. Okay, so again, the attack strength is their front strength, which is two. Oh, it's at Bloody Ridge, sorry. Full reserve strength, two, plus bonsai table, so we have to roll for that, plus in infiltration, which is one. So they, their base is three, and then they're going to add something based on this. They rolled a three. So a three is one, so they have four. <coughs> now the Marine's defense is front strength, which is two, plus air support is one, that's three, plus half of the reserves adds another one, that's four, plus Vandegrift is two, so we actually win. They lose one from there. And that's turn 12, so after I do my appeal roll, which is an event roll here, so let's slide this back over. And we got a five again, so that's going to bump Henderson Field up to two now. So that's nice. And we get a re we get a reinforcement. So I am again going to make this a three. We go to turn 13. So I think I'm going to, I think I'm doing okay. Unless I'm completely screwing this up somehow. But we will, this time we're going to go for a raid of Point Cruz. We'll roll for Japan. They get a two. So they're going to attack Coley Point this time. If they roll a one or a two, they rolled another two. So they are attacking here. Okay, so let's roll for their bonsai, which is a four. So at a four, that's a plus one. So a strength at point Cruz and Coley attack. Front strength, two, plus bonsai results, which adds one, plus half reserve, which is now a one. So that's actually going to end up being a zero, plus infiltration strength, one. So they get, they're at... Uh, Two, three, four. They have four. The Marines have three, plus uh, two is five, 
plus one is six, plus two is eight, so they are going to win there. And that becomes a one. And now we do our raid on Point Cruise. And we got a five. And a five on the damage table is a two, so this is going to become a three. All right, so now to turn 14, this time we'll go for, let's go, actually, let's go for patrol. Let's go for patrol. All right, so we're going for patrol. Let's roll for the Japanese. They roll a one, so they are again going to possibly attack here at Point Cruz. They rolled a five, so they are not attacking at Point Cruz. They do get two extra strength there to go to five. Now we roll for artillery. And it's a six, so again, they do not do any damage. Now we'll roll for our patrol. They didn't infiltrate, so we can ignore that. But if not, they have one or more. If they have one or more infiltrate, if, the, if we roll a one or three, we're going to take that away. So we need to roll a one. And we rolled a two. We rolled a two, so that's gone now. And we go on to turn 15. I'm going to try to, uh, let's read Point Cruise again. Point Cruise is the focal point for us. So let's roll for the Japanese. We get a three. So a three is Bloody Ridge. So we're gonna roll a die to see if they attack. So there, we need to roll a one. Oh, if the die rolls less than or equal to Japanese strength value in reserve, minus two. So I think I messed that up the first time because I think it was only two. So I actually can't attack there. So we're going to add two strength. And we're going to roll for our artillery bombardment. And it's not an artillery bombardment. So now our action was raid point crews. We roll a three. A three on the damage table is one. So this is now a four. Okay, uh, it's turn 15. We get our final our final uh, boost here. So I'm going to make this a four at Point Cruise. That is our final guaranteed uh, reserve there. So we go to turn 16. I am going to... Uh, I'm going to go for the, for the, you know, random event. Appeal to the Navy for help. So let's roll for the Japanese. It's a five, so air raid. So again, we're going to roll and add two because of the uh, air support level. So they need to roll a six, basically. No, they need to, I'm sorry, they need to roll a one or a two. And they got a one. So that was a successful air raid, and they knock us down by one. So now we'll roll for our appeal to the Navy for help. And we got a six. Six is artillery. Move, move Van de Grift from two to three. So now he get we get an extra point for our combat, which is going to be useful. All right, we go to turn 17. Next to last turn. It looks like we're going to pull this out. Let's do... Um, let's do raid point cruise again. So let's roll for the Japanese. They get a six, which is events again for them. So let's slide this over so you can see their event table. Roll. They got a one, which is naval bombardment. Using the damage table, move them, roll one die, move the, uh, wow, so they can actually move it two if they roll high enough. And if I roll a one, Vandegrift gets eliminated. Oh, it's a two. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a one. It's a two, so we lose another air support there. So now we'll roll for our raid on point crews. <laughs> Man, that would have been rough. So we roll a six. And so on the damage table, a six is two damage points. So we reduce point crews to two. So everywhere except Bloody Ridge, we're in good shape. So I'm going to put this on 18 for my action. I don't even know if it matters at this point, but I guess I'll put it on Repair Henderson Field. 
I don't think it matters in the last turn because we're really only dependent on what the Japanese are going to do. Uh, they roll a three, so they're attacking here at Bloody Ridge. But Bloody Ridge, it's you have to roll less or equal to the strength value in reserve minus two. So they have to roll a one to attack here. And they rolled a five. So this is actually going to become a five. And we're going to roll for bombardment uh, for the artillery. And it's a one this time, so that is a hit, which would reduce this. Uh, but that's the end. Well, let me roll to repair Henderson Field just for the hell of it. And it's a six, so that was unsuccessful. But the game's over, and the U.S. ekes it out, or I guess, I don't, well, considering where this is right now, we did eke it out, I would say, because if that goes two more, it would have been psh, curtains, that's it, you're done. So as you can see, the game plays really quickly. It's very straightforward, and it's a balancing act. And a lot of it comes down to what the Japanese do, which is completely based on randomness, essentially. Um, you know, they can, if you roll, you know, badly on, badly for the U.S., based on what they're doing, things, things can get really dicey, uh, no pun intended. But if you roll okay, like I did, I felt like I rolled decently in this game, and I may have screwed up a couple times if if I'm not if I'm not mistaken there. But uh, you get the gist of how the game plays. That was the main main point of doing this. Like I said, it's a really uh, I don't want to say it's simple, but it is a very very low complexity, straightforward game. That's a lot of fun because it is, as I mentioned, a balancing act, you know, trying to make sure you cover all your bases so that you, uh, you know, you don't end up losing. So that is Archie's War, the battle for Guadalcanal, the solitaire version. As I mentioned, if I get an opportunity, I will definitely do a two player version of this, which is a little bit uh, meatier, I guess would be a good word for it. It's a little bit... Uh, a little bit more complex, a little bit more. It's still not a complex game. And there's, you know, more decision making and hidden information and stuff that, that really ramps it up, ramps up the excitement, again, in my opinion. Uh, this is a fun game, Solitaire, and I think an even more fun game, two player. So that's my take on the game, if you're interested in hearing that take. Um, but that's, that's it. That's it. I'm done. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I know you have many choices, and I'm glad you chose to watch my video. It is much appreciated if you'd consider liking, sharing, and or subscribing. Or if you're already a subscriber, thank you for your support. Please consider ringing the bell. Otherwise, you know, no matter what, as long as you, as long as you got something out of this, I feel like my job was a success. So until next time, my name is Joe. This is Hexed Encountered, and happy gaming.